As we continue our look at the ingredients that make up Christianity, our fifth point, I would say, is that we have a mission to accomplish. Jesus has commissioned every disciple to go and preach the gospel, as stated in Mark 16, 15, and 16, where he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. Our mission is also stated by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 4, verses 14 through 16, where he said we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. This means that we are to learn as much as we can about God from his word and be doers of it and encourage and exhort others to do the same. It is our duty to watch out for false doctrine and keep the body of Christ pure by not adding to or taking away from his word. We're to remember the poor, Galatians 2.10. We're to help the weak, Romans 15.1. We're to oppose evil, Ephesians 4.12. And Paul adds this thought in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 6, where he says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We understand that we are to continue to grow in the knowledge and the grace of our Lord and continue transforming ourselves to be more like Christ and encourage others to do the same. Romans 12 verses 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The sixth thing that I would say is that we have a battle to fight. Paul refers to it as the good fight of faith in 1 Timothy 6 and verse 12. Now it's not a carnal war with material weapons, Rather, it's a spiritual war against every kind of wickedness. Paul described it this way in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 13. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. We must continually test ourselves to see if we are in the faith, and we must continually battle against sinful conduct and teaching that is contrary to the word of God. We're called to be good soldiers of Christ. In 2 Timothy 2 and verse 3, Paul says, You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And finally, I would say that, we have a reward to receive from God, and that reward is eternal life in heaven. John 10, verses 27 and 28, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Friends, we know without a doubt that if we remain faithful to God, that we will receive that crown of righteousness. Revelation 2 verse and verse 10 says, Do not fear any of those things about which you are to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. But be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Paul describes it this way in 1 Corinthians 9, beginning in verse 24. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is tempered in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified." 
Friends, when we run our race of faith, we can know that we have our reward in heaven, just as the Apostle Paul. These seven ingredients that we've discussed in these three lessons this week are just the basics about Christianity because no one could explore the depths of Christianity in just this short period of time. However, these ingredients would give anyone that did not know much about Christianity a greater understanding about what Christianity is all about and what it's based upon. And I hope that you will share what you've learned from these lessons with others and that it also will serve as a reminder to you of why you are a Christian, what God expects from you, and the assurance that you have of a home in heaven when you remain faithful to God. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today, and have a blessed day.